Hi. Okay. I am nearing the end of the CX500 Turbo. Um, maybe even tonight I'll finish that. So there were a number of problems that have been happening. And it has certainly taken a downturn in the last uh, little while. So I'm going to speak about all of those problems. So that when we do the talk about the final finished product, I don't need to cover um, in depth those those problems. Um, let's start with this. So to mask that caliper on there is actually really, really difficult. And if I'd painted it, the whole thing black first, and keep in mind that I already painted the top section black to get that chrome because uh, that alclad gets sprayed over gloss black. Um, I was sort of already half there. So if I'd done that, that would have solved the caliper problem, but there'd still be some masking. And in cases like that, well, you just have to sort of see which is less of a hassle to achieve, painting the gold after the black or the black after the gold. In this case, I don't really know, um, but I'm thinking that I would have preferred to paint the black first. Not a major issue, just a painting consideration. Okay, a good, po a, a good point, the screen went on very well even though it doesn't have the best um, fitting arrangement inside of there now um, so I was able to glue this with Tamiya glue because they have allowed for enough of the clear part that goes below the level of the white that you can actually do a, a fair glue there. So what I do is I, I put some glue on the inside ridge. You can see that ridge on the inside there. I put glue on there first, let that start softening the plastic up, um, and then sort of give it a bit of thought whether, whether I'm going to try it. And in this case, I did try and put glue onto the clear piece. Often I'll avoid that, and often I won't even use Tamiya cement. But all I'm really saying in this case is this kit allows for a nice overlap inside there. And it's good enough to use Tamiya glue, though, of course, if you mess up well, your screen is messed up. So you could also do it with um, some of the other, the crystal clear or whatever. Um, now, the problem with this screen attachment is that it's good on that it's good in that area, but it's not good on the sides. Don't try and fit don't try and fit the bottom of the canopy into the bottom of the side rail that's been given on this fairing. Just focus on getting it centered on the front and hold it on the front because there's actually a slight gap. Um I mean, you could force it if you really want. You could force it. I don't like to do that. And in all honesty, you, well, you can, I don't know if you can just make out, if I hold it like that and you look down the side, you can almost make out a bit of light that goes through there. Not, not very easy. Um, there is a slight gap. You could force it if you want, but to get it nicely centered on, start off by gluing the center part well into position and let that completely dry. And then if you were going to do sides, um, you could put a little bit of glue in there and then uh, squeeze it a bit. So all in all, very good there. That's almost all done. I just need to get the indicators on. I have, of course, been quite careful not to pull these decals off. I have done the side grills which came out very well and the front grills I'm still busy on and they are not coming out well and that is one of the weak areas of this where if you try and spray the black in there first well then you've got masking to do to do your white painting and if you do your white 
part you've still got a you've still got a difficult recessed area in there to paint that black on my next build i think i'm going to be removing that part remaking it so that i can spray the white properly um, these two side pieces went on these two side grills went on without hassle um, there isn't a positioning pin there so you do have to sort of put your glue in there there's a guide rail so that you don't push it in too far but you have to you, you can still you can still sort of get it to do this a little bit so you've got to you've got to center that nicely anyway that is coming on very nicely virtually done i'll do the indicators tonight now, on a, on a note with those decals and these ones here. So, Cartograph, very, very nice decals. I'm not sure if they're a vinyl type of decal. They, they, as someone mentioned, they are thicker than your usual decals. They are resistant to you accidentally mashing them in some way. I mean, eventually, if you try hard enough, of course, you can mash any decals. But I mean, with all of my manipulating them, trying to get them over the um, curved surfaces, it, it all went well. Um, but I think they behave differently because they're vinyl and the glue that Cartograph uses, I think is different to, for instance, if you've been mod uh, building models for a while, from what you would be used to with old Airfix, old, so, some of the older kits which seem to seat themselves very well um, and the reason I say that is because after some of these on the side panels here were dry I exit well uh, I knew I was going to touch them so it, it wasn't a case of accidental I tried to avoid it but and it lifted exceptionally easily so that sort of makes me realize that the glue that they've used is nice but it's not the best of all. Um, there are glues that you've seen on Airfix kits, which once that decal is set, um, the only way you're getting that off is to sc scratch and splinter it off, and, and it absolutely gets destroyed. Now, half of this is the fault of me putting the decals onto gloss plastic and not onto paint. So the microsole and set would have etched better into the paint if I'd done it that way as opposed to the gloss plastic so half of it is my fault but I have built um, models where I've put decals on plastic before and I know that they can adhere much better than what happened here okay next bit of a catch that I didn't quite realize is that the tail piece unlike on a lot of bikes needs to be glued to the side covers which i'm not that fond of i do prefer the parts of a motorbike to be the same as what they are on the real bike but anyway to uh, to assemble them properly on this model they actually need to be glued on and if i'd known that i would have been able to position my decals maybe a bit better when i put them on in the end it's it's good i've got it all together um, there's no hassles with that aspect of it really you do need to then poke holes through your decals to be able to slot these um, uh, rear grips, rear hand grips on. Um, that could have trashed my decals a bit there if it had sort of caused a bit of a split along a line and gone in. But anyway, it I got it in. It went okay there. So that's on. Um, and this, this part can come off quite easily at this point. It only grips on with two pins, which are not very... Uh, just get this off. They, they're, not, they're not as secure. So that's... Uh, can you see them there? No. There. Those two pins there. Um, it's not as secure as some other parts which fit on. Anyway, that's done. So, the biggest problem that I encountered and ended up with a little bit of a 
minor disaster is the, the exhaust setup. So, now here's the big warning on this kit. As I was putting on my, my exhaust, this pipe, which runs onto the turbo and fits into position onto the turbo, and fits onto this pipe, which I still have in a gunmetal color, there's a very nice joint there, nothing wrong with that, and nothing wrong with the joint that fits onto there. But when that and that are in position, the two pins there, which slot into the engine, have then caused the left and the right outlets of the exhaust to be a little misaligned. Now you can actually catch that misalignment now, because that pipe is slightly offset that way. You can make that out there. Which means my one exhaust was going on really nicely and the other one was not going on at all. I needed to clip a part of uh, this one off because that goes out further there. So I needed to clip a small piece off. Luckily that little end attachment is such that you can do it without anyone ever knowing. And if I hadn't said that you'd never, never have known. But having to adjust a part which you know actually should fit properly means that um, the assembly of this area needs to be tweaked somehow. Um, that's a little bit of a difficult one which I haven't actually fully got an answer for yet. Because if you're not going to touch that pipe and you're not going to touch that pipe, then something between that connection and the turbo connection is causing a bit of a problem. Um, so let's assume that I didn't attach it to the turbo there but fitted it in properly here. I would have about a millimeter or millimeter and a half out there and how would you know that at the time of assembling your turbo which now you can't you, you can't see in there. So when I get to my second build, um, that's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get that right. Um, yep, let's, let's see when I get to my second build. Now, regarding the exhausts themselves, the exhaust's main attachment is onto the um, rear foot peg bracket. There's a little plate below it which you glue that onto. And I'm almost of the opinion that it might be better to glue your two exhausts on first, having put your foot pegs on properly, and ensure that you've got the same spacing at the back and everything is nicely aligned because now as it is, that exhaust is a bit further from the wheel than that exhaust. So close, but not, not symmetrical. And a, a break in symmetry always is a bit annoying. So I've got it together, it's nice and sturdy, but it should not have been done the way I did it. Um, I could jump to the easy conclusion that the turbo's position is at fault, but I also know that I put that in pretty much very, very well centered and so on. So um, it could be possible to break the steps and actually not put the turbo on until you've done the whole exhaust system and got that pipe on. Um, I'll investigate that in dry fitting when I get to that. Okay, so the forks are just about ready to go on. I'm hoping that the radiator has ended up in a very, very perpendicular and um, symmetrical positioning so that I don't get any hassles uh, with final assembly there. But there's very little to go on and when we do the final talk on this, it'll look nice and I will have learnt a lot. Um, I'm going to be changing my mind significantly about this kit though compared to the um, XV1000 Virago, which was just an, an absolute pleasure all the way and produced a top-notch result. This one is a more difficult kit. 
um, for for all of the old models, I'm thinking this might be one of the more difficult of all of them, possibly in the top top three of most difficult, only because of the fit can go wrong on things, and on other things like the headlight and the um, windscreen. If you're not if you're not doing it in a certain way, you can you can get that wrong. So. That's um, that's the update on that, and it won't be long till we finish that. So I have decided on the next build to do full lighting, all the indicators and lights will get that. So I'll do a bit of a talk on that. Anyway, I hope that was good. Cheers.